Hey there YouTube, good morning, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in. I want to share something with you real quick before we get into the projects, and that is the gauntlet that my 13 year old daughter just dropped. She's She's been noticing me filming these videos lately, and she's like, what dad, are you suddenly becoming a YouTuber? A YouTuber? I'm like, actually I've had a YouTube channel for a long, long time. Just because you don't subscribe to it, oh daughter of mine. Um, anyway, she was giving me a hard time, and what I'd like to say is, let's see if we can prove her wrong. I know I don't have that many subscribers right now, but if you would do me the great favor of liking, subscribing, and sharing this video, and encouraging other people to subscribe to it, if you're into Corrado stuff or just car enthusiasm, shade tree mechanicing, I do share stuff that have to do with my ministry life as a worship pastor, uh, ministry tips and tools, and then a lot of just random geekery. I'm involved in a lot of different areas of life. So, uh, if any of that strikes your fancy, please like it, share it, encourage others to subscribe. Let's see if we can prove my teenage daughter wrong that... Uh, <laughs> She's basically insinuating that I had no, I didn't belong on YouTube, and maybe she's right. I don't know, but I've seen a lot of really stupid stuff on YouTube, and I will admit that I like a lot of the stupid stuff that's on YouTube. So let's see if we can boost up those numbers and give me the ability as a dad of a teenage daughter to say "ha" in your face, you know, in a most loving way, of course, because you know I love her even if she gives me a hard time and mocks my things. And she shouldn't, because her car is one of the projects we're working on. So, there you go. Anyway, let's move on to our project for the day. All right, while I'm waiting for my vacuum pump to clear out the AC system, just a little touch here. Uh, if you are one of the folks who has gotten this beautiful carbon fiber uh, rain tray and the matching cowl, that goes underneath your windshield wipers here from Spoon Fed Tuning and uh, you tried to follow the exact instructions that James gives uh, you might have found there's a couple of things left out. First of all I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that instead of electrical tape use cloth high temperature tape. You can get that from Amazon it's like eight bucks. In the meantime I'm gonna take the cloth tape that I have laid across the back here of the rain tray and windshield wiper cowl assembly. I'm just going to gently bend it over. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's just sort of one of those nice extra added things to make sure that if for whatever reason you've popped your hood and the rubber trim has come out of place, that there is something preventing rain and moisture from getting down where you don't want it to go, which is namely on your ECU. So that's just bent over on there. Now one thing that many people may have noticed when they go to install this rubber piece of trim that goes on here is it doesn't fit on immediately with the new spoon-fed carbon fiber pieces. This is because adding these on triples the width for this little channel. So what you're going to actually have to do, and this is something that James did not put in his instructions, is take a small screwdriver and work your way along the whole channel, and this is just tedious for the first time you do it, but just work your way along the channel and widen that up so that it will actually clip in place and stay on without drama. Again, by adding those carbon fiber pieces, you have tripled the width that this thing is normally used to holding on to. So just making your way down at once, and uh, that opens up the little metal clip that's inside here, and you should be good to go. Yes, that fits much happier now. We'll go to the other side. All right, cool. 
cool. Rubber trim is in place. By the way, this is the very same rain tray that was on my blue G60 Corrado that I drove off the cliff in Malibu. So it is crash tested. I don't think James would recommend you doing that, but it's one of my holdovers that I've kept around from the old car. It's cracked in a couple of small spots here, but overall it's held up pretty good. One of the other quirks about a 25 year old car is the heat resistant cloth tape that the factory so lovingly put on has come off in a lot of places. So again, this stuff is pretty cheap. You can get it on Amazon. You're not going to find it at Home Depot or your auto parts store. This is the high temperature cloth wiring tape. And while I'm in here, I'm just taking the time to re-wrap a few key things. This is the wiring harness that goes to the uh, heaters for our wiper nozzles. Well, why am I bothering with that? Well, you know, if they chafe, and I happen to go engage them. Uh, they get engaged, by the way, when you turn on your defroster. So when your window defroster and, and your uh, mirror defrosters are turned on, this is on. It is heating these nozzles constantly. So when you go blast your windshield, warm water is hitting it in a cold climate or to clear it from fog and stuff. But that means there's current going through one of these wires and if it chafes you can ground out and that can uh, you know cause all sorts of electrical issues in your car we already have enough of those so a little bit of protection goes a long way keeping you on the road and avoiding you know things like engine fires and unpleasant scenarios like that I'm just gonna wrap it around and keep this little wiring bundle happy This is one of those nice things you can do while you're waiting for other things to happen. Right now we're waiting for the AC system to uh, hold up to vacuum, holdly, hopefully. And I'm sure there are probably people that'll give me tips on how to wrap this better, but I don't care. It's wrapped, it's overlapped. It's protected, it's not gonna chafe. It'll be good here. Um, up here, this little clip should be able to just pop out. Give me a little bit more access to the wiring bundle that I'm working on. There we go. So I can continue as I've just messed up the tape. I'm gonna go ahead and tear it here and start over. This stuff tears really easily is good when you're attaching it and you do something like mess it up like this. So I'm going to just start with a fresh clean part and keep working my way up. My wife was laughing at me the other night because as I was watching some of the YouTube videos that I like, like Sam Crack and Ratarosa and uh, Hoovy's Garage, VinWiki, among the browsing videos that get suggested came one of my videos. So I'm looking at like a Doug DeMuro video which had 6 million views and a VinWiki video that had you know, a couple hundred thousand views and then there was one of my videos and it had 17 views so thank you all 17 of you that have watched that gets this all the way up here, so I'm going to go ahead and tear it and secure it. And this 
this pristine? No. Is this Concours de Elegant quality? No. Am I feeling better about this that it's not going to light on fire? Absolutely. So. Put our newly wrapped cable back inside the harness holder. Wiggle that back up into place. Et voila. And I'm also going to secure it down here in its bracket that it likes to live in as well. So, there we go. Happy cable, happy Brendan. Almost forgot. One little pro tip for if you're doing extensive work on your car, like taking the whole front of it off to do something, while you are taking it apart, I highly recommend the bag method. Take Ziploc baggies and label what each of these parts are with a Sharpie marker as you're taking them off. It's going to make reassembly super helpful. So I've got all the parts labeled. And as I start to put it back together, I'll go, oh yeah, that's what this is. 